Welcome to part 13 of my building the chaperone, this paddle wheel steamer. And I'm gonna get directly into what I did since the last posting. So let's get on with that. And I'll have a surprise at the end of this segment. If I haven't already mentioned, the blueprints for this I thought were too nice to be wasted. So I've actually framed them. Now I've still left this protective film on it until I'm done with construction. I'm building the, what is called a stage. This is full size image of it. If you notice this framing piece is kind of around the edges. So I made them just about a, an eighth of an inch longer so I can round the edges after I glue them together. For this, I'm using wood glue and I put down a piece of cellophane here so I can rest it there and it won't glue itself to the paper if I get too much glue on it. I think what I'll do is I'll group it in uh, groups of five or six, and then I'll kind of clamp this a little bit, let it dry, and then glue all of those together because there's a series of 20 boards that I'll need to have glued together. I've got two of the three sections uh, together. Obviously, I've added these clamps to keep it uh, flat on the top, and then these two ends to push them together. Suppose I could have put another one in here to push the center together. I'm going to let that dry a little bit and then I'll put the last section on. I had worked on this stage which goes on the front of the boat and at some point I twisted it wrong or whatever and the, the glue popped. I apparently didn't put enough glue on it and somehow I'm putting it back together I actually switched directions and I know it doesn't look all that bad, but it was bothering me and where it didn't look good is on the two ends. I decided it's not that difficult to make one. I have some really nice oak wood that was similar in size. And so I remade it and I think that looks very nice. I made the, the sides. I left this unpainted so the glue would adhere stronger when I put these in place. So that's the reason it's partially painted. So these will go here. And I like that a lot better. Easy to make. That's part of the reason I like working with wood as opposed to plastic or metal. Here's that front ramp that I remade completely. And I have all that rigging done and it does, it does move. Both the parts list and the diagram show that uh, there's a whistle, steam whistle. I can't find it. I don't know if I misplaced it, knocked it on the floor, who knows. And I didn't show this because I didn't know how well it was gonna turn out, but I made my own whistle and I'm actually pretty happy with it. The top part, the whistle part, is made out of wood, dowel rods that I cut the angles in, obviously copper wire, and I have some chemicals that will age this copper and darken that solder joint. I've used this before. It's called Novacan Black Patina, and it's for solder and lead. Used a lot on, I think, lead uh, glass windows and stained glass windows. Usually, I dilute this and then soak the copper in it. I'm just going to put a little dab in there and this is acidic so don't get it on your skin or in your eyes or anything use in a well ventilated area we'll see if I can darken this yeah it already darkened the solder but I also want to darken the copper sometimes it takes a little longer There it goes. Now to stop the reaction, you'll have to rinse it in water. I'll try and dab it off. I'd like to keep a little bit of the copper look. Let me go run it in water so it doesn't turn any, turn any darker. Here's the finished product. I will snip this off about right there and then put it up on top of the the ship. 
there are a couple lanterns on the smokestacks. It clearly shows a tube that holds it in place out of the smokestack, but these are just a solid unit. I will drill a small hole in it myself so I can put a wire in there to attach it to the smokestack. <laughs> my piece of wire. Once that dries I'll shape the wire and attach it to the smokestack. Here's the finished lanterns that I put on the ship. I may uh, reposition them, you know, outward a little bit. They're a little crookedish, but I can bend that after the, the glue dries. I gave a little red tint to them because I, I'm assuming they are supposed to be lit to mark the uh, location of the boat. I don't know. But there they are, looking good. I'm into rope work and putting on some of the, the smaller details. There's a cleat here, another large here. There's some twins of these towards the back of the ship. Notice on each side of the stairwell, there are two very small ones. I used epoxy glue on all of these, which is the type that you mix the two together, even amounts, and it's supposed to be real strong. I thought I would need that for those kinds of things because I'm gonna wrap rope around it. This will pull these kind of taut once I get some weight on it. This will suspend here in the air, probably I think at an angle, slight angle, and I've got quite a bit of rope work to do to get this to um, be supported. This actually does move and pivot. It can raise and lower. I've started working on these lifeboats. They're just made out of uh, metal and I don't want metal lifeboats. I could paint them, but I decided to go ahead and cover them with wood. So you can see I've got these in place. Got some more to do here. Painted the inside black just as a cover. This one's almost done. There's a center board here that I will take one of the real small I'm in the process of getting ready to make it bend. So I've been soaking it. So I'll put that little thin piece of wood right there. Probably paint this the maroon color. The lifeboat itself, I'll stain. I've uh, sanded this one, so now I'll just restain it. I will also put, similarly, that real thin board. I'll cover those with spaces in between to put a floor in it. I may have said this in the past, but probably the best tool investment that I've made in a long time was this miniature belt sander. It wasn't real expensive. I don't remember exactly how much. As an example, when I'm making these boats and you have to fill in these little pieces, I can shape it. Now this part, you can see I've already shaped that so it fits really well. This other side, I will trim off Now what I do is I just play with it on the belt sander until I get it to the right shape. Now I have it so it fits in there just right. I'll glue it in place. Now that I have them all glued in place, you know, there are some edges, so it's not level or even, but I come back to my belt sander and smooth all this out. If there's any gaps that I don't like, there's one here, I can fill that with wood putty here in just a little bit. I have it sanded down to where I want. Here's one that I've done a little more work to. Still gonna stain this and put that runner down the center. Here's that piece that I'm gonna put right down the middle of the bottom of the ship and paint maroon. I've already bent the front part, so this will match up pretty well. 
the CA glue will hold that in place. Now I'm going to bend the back part. And what I've done is soak this in just warm water. It's just a standard soldering iron. I have this little curvature tool, which you could easily make one. I bought it, I think. It's a plank bender. And I will heat this end and slowly put that bend in it. doesn't have to be exact. It'll form to the boat itself when you glue it in place. That's going to work just like I want. I make it a little longer so I can trim it off after I have it glued in place. I finished the work on the lifeboats. I made some oars. Uh, I've got rings in the front for the to lift them off the ship. But as you can see, they sit crooked because of this little runner but I think they would anyway. So I made these little stands for them. That will make them sit nice and straight. Made the curvature for the bottom of the lifeboats with a curved file, and it's gonna work pretty well. I'm gonna paint these white. Here's one of my finished lifeboats, and I made the oars by hand. They're not exactly perfect. This is the opposite side on the additional lifeboat. I did go ahead and leave them wood toned at the bottom. The kit shows them painted white. I could have done either. I tried taking some brown, like butcher block paper, getting it wet, forming it around the top and making a cover. It just never looked right, so I'm, I'm not gonna put any covers on them. The launch posts for the lifeboats, I just kind of made my own, tapered them a little bit. I drilled a hole, put some brass through here, and then an attached plate that would kind of help hold it in place. They actually could function, but I have them glued in place. The ship's whistles, only because I never could find the whistle and I'm sure it was in the package. Pardon the dust, I need to clean off some of the dust, but this is the, uh, the top, that final trim piece. I just put that on. I'm gonna end part 13 here. The model is actually finished. I've got just a couple touch-ups to do here and there. Here's a, another item that I made myself and decided to install. If you can see it in the background, it's kind of a curved stairway to get up to the next level. The ship's bell is now in place. And I will show you the complete ship in the next episode. This is Boiler Dan 1. And as always, thanks for watching.